McLaren Taiwan uh, achieved our Global Retailer of the Year Award in 2022. It's the second year that they've achieved the award. So I wanted to recognize the fact that they are a very professional retailer, very customer centric. So everything they do is around the customer. And there is a very large supercar community here. So a lot of owners, a lot of enthusiasts, and a lot of media as well. So it made sense for us to launch 750 here, given those points. Um, so I think if you look at 750S and say you take Artura as our other supercar, um, they both deliver um, a very exhilarating drive experience, but in different ways. So the 750S is really taking the, the existing benchmark of 720 and just pushing the boundaries even further. So um, as Shane said yesterday, it's a lighter car, it's a more powerful car, it's a more aggressive car, and it sets the new benchmark for us. Whereas with Artura, Artura still has an amazing performance um, capability, but it's also a more everyday car. So you have the four different drive modes from track where you can go super fast to then um, E mode where you know you can drive through the city late at night very quiet. So both deliver a very strong experience, but in different ways. And I think within Asia, we have two very different groups of customers. We have some customers that really want the raw aggressive supercar that is 750, but we also having a, uh, we have a growing community of customers that do want the more everyday, slightly more lifestyle product. And that's what Artura gives those people. So there's space in the market for both. It's a good question. Um, so I think um, our CEO, Michael Leiters, has been very clear that he's willing to look at any product for McLaren, but it has to maintain the McLaren DNA. So what do we mean by McLaren DNA? We mean lightweight, we mean exhilaration, we mean driving performance and experience. And I think at the moment, if you look at a fully electric car, the technology isn't necessarily there yet to be able to have a McLaren that is 100% electric and still gives you that core DNA. Do I think that we'll be able to do it in the future? Most likely, but is it coming in the very short term? I don't think so. Um, but I think the, the overall supercar and super luxury car segment is moving towards electrification. If you look at Rolls-Royce and Bentley, they've both launched 100% electric cars. The difference with those cars is that they're not designed to give you an exhilarating driving experience. They're there for your comfortable laid back, you know, um, drive experience, which is not what we are about. So I don't think we're there yet. Exactly, yes. The, the attributes of a full EV definitely lend themselves to other brands better. Like Charlotte says, Bentley, Rolls-Royce, you know, it's lovely to coast along in almost silence. Whereas for us, the feedback we get from our customer base is that the engagement that a combustion engine provides them is essential to the driver of a McLaren. So um, there will be challenges with developing a bed for McLaren, but we will absolutely do that when we are required to do so, or when we believe that the technology is there, which is matched by the customer demand as well. Um, so 750S features uh, a number of really innovative technologies. Firstly, we are very proud of our suspension system, which we call Proactive Chassis Control. Um, and we're showing it in the third iteration on 750. Um, it's unique to other suspension systems from other manufacturers, um, and even different from the system we feature on Artura, because we do not have a conventional anti-roll bar, which links the sides of the car from suspension to suspension. Uh, they are essentially linked by um, tubes which transfer hydraulic fluid across the car. And it allows you to play with the configuration of the car through the comfort, sport and track mode, more so um, on other cars where you just be changing the dampers on either side of the car. You're actually changing the amount of fluid that you transfer across the car. It's a very sophisticated system um, and allows you to really change the personality of the drive modes of the car significantly. Um, we also have active aerodynamics on 750, which is extremely impressive and again, that 
can really change the handling characteristics of the car. So when we saw the car yesterday, I believe that the wing was stowed. So it was down, it was in line with the bodywork, which gives a very aerodynamic um, profile and allows you to achieve your top speed. But that wing will move, it will raise, it will act as an air brake as well. Um, so there's some really sophisticated technologies on 750. So to talk about the suspension system, the proactive control, proactive chassis control, so on 750 is the third version and on 720 it was the, it was the second. So we've evolved that system comprehensively. Um, to name a few changes, we have different springs on 750. We're softer on the front and stiffer on the rear. We've changed the dampers, the valving inside the dampers. We've changed the accumulators. Essentially every area of that system has been touched and upgraded and improved and that is a similar ethos throughout the entire car, whether that's the powertrain as well, or the, the HMI, how you interact with the car as a driver. There are hundreds of changes, um, and actually from a component set perspective, 750 is 30% different in the, the components that we use versus 720. A lot. So we've had six years of customer feedback on 720. One of the big things that we understand is that customers love to drive our cars as much as possible. Um, they are not for the garage, they're not for display. Um, they're amazing performing cars and people want to experience that. So when we came to defining the successor to 720, priority number one was to retain its usability. And that was a, a big challenge to improve the performance and improve the engagement without sacrificing that. So it would be very easy to take weight out of the car, which would compromise that. So for example, you could take the carpet out, but it would get louder in the cabin and it would get less comfortable. So customer feedback really led us to prioritizing keeping the, the usability of the car, but still we really wanted to deliver an increase in performance and engagement. An amazing one, <laughs> genuinely, absolutely staggering. When you look at the um, you know, hypercars of 10 years ago, or even less, 750 is matching and beating that performance. So this was cars which cost several million pounds just a few years ago. And that technology and our learnings as a, as a company as we've matured, we can now deliver that performance in a series production offering. Um, so those customers which are lucky enough to experience P1, and was absolutely mind blowing, you know, on a track, 750S would be pretty much, you know, delivering that same level of performance um, as a hypercar of just a few years ago.